Got myself a Freeview Play box. What is a Freeview Play versus a Freeview box? Well, Freeview Play means it collates all those individual on-demand apps such as BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, Channel 4, etc. All the ones that are available, sticks them under one roof, and then in its EPG, its Electronic Program Guide, it allows you to view today and obviously move forward in time and see what's on, but also to go backwards in time up to one week. Go back backwards in time up to one week. See those programs you thought you'd missed. That's Freeview Play versus Freeview. Now, why would you get a Freeview box? Well, there are plenty of other alternatives. One of the reasons you're going to get a Freeview box is, like me, you've probably said goodbye to Sky and <laughs> Sky High bills that every 18 months you have to phone up and say, oh, please, 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 please reduce my bill. Give me a good deal. Two hours later, you may or may not get a good deal. When you've had enough of that, you're going to say, do you know what? There's got to be more to life than haggling with Sky. So you've already got your terrestrial aerial. And that's the point about Freeview. It's still going to work over your TV aerial. When you had Sky, you was able to record channels and watch other channels at the same time, depending on which box, which version you've got. It could be watch one, record one, or it could be multiple channels. If indeed you've got Sky Q. Well, I have here the Manhattan TR, T3R, it's a one terabyte recordable drive. You can get free view boxes that will only receive channels. And you can get them with various size hard drives. As far as Manhattan go, the largest you get is one terabyte. They do a 500 gigabyte version. This is about 200 quid. It's not going to be long before you've recovered that. If you stick with one of these, instead of your Sky subscription. So one terabyte, I know you can get two terabytes on the Sky, but that's still a lot of recordings. You can get HD channels on the Manhattan recorder. The Manhattan recorder says it supports 4K, but of course, while the likes of Sky and Netflix, and by the way, Netflix is not on here, I'll get to that in a minute. The likes of Sky will give you, you know, quite a bit of 4K programming. While this supports 4K, it means you basically start with the likes of YouTube and the BBC iPlayer. However, it does support 4K. This is not a, this is not an all singing, all dancing skylight box. This is something that is usable as a replacement. What to expect? Well, you can record two channels and watch a third one. But to do that, you will use the loop out function on this box. So if I look at the box, I'm turning around to, this, to the, the back side of it. Uh, and I'm gonna quickly show you what's there. So you'll have your normal single terrestrial aerial in. That will support two channels. Then you have your loop out. That loop out will then go from the box into your TV. That will become your third channel. So when the box itself is recording two channels, you'll then use your TV's tuner to watch that third channel. So strictly speaking, watch one, record two. But the box itself, is only recording two, only supports two channels. It's your TV and a TV tuner, I should point out, that's supporting that extra channel. You've got your HDMI out, which is how you're gonna connect it to your telly. You do have a USB out, but the USB out is only for software updates. The box itself supports Wi-Fi, but for best experience, of course, it's always gonna be best to hardwire it. You do have an ethernet uh, port, which is the real way you know, only, only, only four backs of Wi-Fi if you really have to, and then you have your power socket. In maximum use, this will draw 24 watts maximum. Of course, that's when it's <laughs> fully loaded. You're recording when it's not in, when it's not in use or when it's in standby. It will be uh, a hell of a lot less than that. So, it does support the YouTube app. It does support the on-demand, basically all the on-demand apps that are out there. And because it's free view play, it will collect them in one place. If you're going the route of, well, I'm replacing Sky, one other consideration you're probably making, apart from some of the pay uh, options like uh, Now TV and the likes, there's several of them, BT, or they all have their own services, but if you want a totally subscription-free, you're looking at FreeSat, FreeView, or indeed a smart box. I have my brilliant NVIDIA Shield, which I can get all sorts of services on, especially like the likes of Netflix that I can't get on here. That's more 
of a techie, yeah, a little bit of a techie thing. This is not for someone who doesn't want to delve into their tech. This is a kind of no-brainer tech, replacing your sky, or indeed just using a spare uh, terrestrial aerial lead, coaxial cable, whatever you want to call it, uh, and you don't want to have to think too much. Then it's a bit of a no-brainer between this and your FreeSat. FreeSat, because you're replacing sky, you already have the sky cables. And whether you have the old type or the new type of LMB, the old, the old dish, the new type of dish, the very latest FreeSat boxes will support both dishes. Just bear in mind, the older FreeSat boxes will only support the older uh, narrowband Sky as it was, the older type LMBs. But you'll already have satellite connections and you, you'll want to say, well, shall I use FreeSat or FreeView? It's probably better to go with FreeView, not least because it's the only place you're gonna get all the Channel 4 stuff, the Channel 4 On Demand, Channel 4 HD, and all the other associated channels that come with Channel 4. The headline features will be, there's a lot more HD channels on FreeSat, but a lot of them are a bit of nonsense. The main HD you will be on FreeView, and there are indeed 15 at the point of this uh, review, uh, well, kind of overview of the box. At this point, there's 15, and it's the main ones, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5. And probably really important to you, you've got the likes of QVC, QVC Beauty, um, and some of the others, you've got uh, BBC News in HD, which is pretty useful if you're used to Sky News in HD. You still get Sky News on it, by the way, it's just not in HD. So I'm gonna quickly show you the remote. The remote is something I'm not particularly impressed with. It may even be the weakest part of this package. You can, of course, replace this. You can, of course, replace it with a programmable remote. Um, that's probably the best way to go, but First of all, it's just too long. You, you can't simply go from one bit of it to the other. What you'll be on most of the time will be the OK button, uh, backwards and forwards, channel up, channel up, channel down, volume buttons. But that makes the actual play, when you go into your recordings and go to forward, back, play, that's very awkward. Not least because there's no backlight. So if you have any sort of dim room, which, you know, it's could well be the case you're watching telly at night. Uh, you're not, A, you can't get your fingers up there, or it's very awkward to do it. You can't even see where your fingers are. All compounded by the play and pause button is one button on a rocker. So you're either going to the right hand side for the pause or the left hand side for the play. But as far as just feeling for it, you're just feeling for a single button and then you have to go to the edge. It's a really poor remote in what is not a cheap package about 200 quid when you're getting the one terabyte uh, recorder. Just to quickly show you, you've got everything you'd expect. The main features would be, as far as this box goes, you've got your, you can quick shortcuts to your online guide, your EPG. You can quickly go to any recordings you've made. You can go to your main home screen, which will be where you then can get into everything else if you wanted without using a shortcut. Of course, you've got your record buttons, your teletext and the like, your colored buttons and your mute button. You can reprogram some of these buttons so it will replace your TV remote. So you can use one remote and without having to have one for the box and one for your TV because you can quite easily uh, program this for the volume buttons from your current remote for the TV, the AV button. Quite simply, you'd hold down the, the subtitles button and the text buttons together. That will go into programming mode. You then press the button you're gonna uh, reprogram. You then hold the current the button on the other remote, uh, aim it at this one, and and it's done. And then when you're all done, you go okay. The instructions are in the manual. It's very very simple. So that's probably about the best thing I can say about this remote. So user experience actually using the box. So here we are. First thing you see, I'm on BBC One. I'm on BBC One HD. HD channel start from 101. I know I'm on BBC One HD. It's telling me. I can scroll along from here, see all the programs that are coming up later. I can add a reminder for a program that's coming up and I can hit my R button to record the current program. I can also open my BBC iPlayer from here to use all the features of this box. You're going to need to sign up to three or four of the apps such as iPlayer, ITV Hub, the Channel 4 Player, etc. So we'll start off by going to our home button. On the home page, you can get to everything else that's on the box. The first thing you're gonna see is the TV guide, but if we start at the top, 
I've got the options to set my box up from here. So picture and sound options, accessibility, recording. I can change, obviously I want to record in HD, but if I didn't and I wanted more space on the hard drive, I could change that to SD. And the skip forward and back buttons I've got options for. My parental controls I've turned off. I can edit my channels, change my favorites, remove channels that I don't ever want to see. I can do me retune from here. Internet options, system options, general information. There's also the help tag. So useful if you really are not that au fait with modern tech. So I scroll down, my TV guide. For you, a big portion of this is about that TV guide. I'm hitting TV guide. I'm going to my TV guide. First of all, you'll see it's starting off on today. But the big thing about Freeview is I could go back in time. If I hit my rewind, I can go back by up to a week and watch programs that I've missed from during the week because it integrates with the on-demand players. So I can see everything that's happened in the last week. Or I could come back up to today. Sky-like information at the top. You've got your mini player, top right-hand corner. Information about the program, I can record from here. And that, okay, I can watch that. Depending on the program, there will be other options. If I go forward in time, I could add a reminder. So watch what you can do with your OK button. You can, of course, also go up there where it says all channels. I hit my yellow button. I can narrow down the guide. So I could just show my favorite channels, HD channels, catch up programs, radio, or indeed all channels. Go back to my home screen. I can access my recordings from here. I could also do that with the shortcut, which is on the remote. Of course, this is a free view play box. That means it collates all those on-demand channels, all those individual apps that you can see here, where I can go to the individual app, but Freeview Play collates them under one place, and they will suggest what you may want to watch, having collated from all of those players. You can, of course, narrow it down. But Skylike again, box sets, sport, whatever, movies. There is a big choice. It is handy having them all collated under one place. Back to my home screen. If I go into on demand, of course I can't hit record, but I can hit add to my watch list in my global search. I can do a global search for programs here. You can also go down to my YouTube player. It's the YouTube app you'll find on a smart TV. You can sign in with or without an account. And it's an app you'll be familiar with if you've used one before. Back to my home screen. So of course, we've got all the individual apps, but Freeview for Play is about collating them under one place. And there is indeed Explore Freeview Play, which is also, by the way, on channel 100. You can go straight to channel 100, get your Freeview Play, or you can use the app here. And this is bringing all the on-demand under one screen. This is really handy. So you can narrow it down by genre. There really is a huge choice once you're collating all the on-demand apps. So I go back to normal TV, I hit an exit. If I hit my info button, I do get full information for that program. Also get information about extra showings. Here it's telling me it's on SD as well as HD. And the other big thing about Freeview is, I scroll to a program, it looks a bit interesting, but I've missed the beginning. I can now hit my green button and find my on-demand players. I can watch that from the beginning. I'm hitting my green button. And here we go from the beginning. So that's pretty handy. On the remote, I can go straight to my recordings without hitting the home button. I can narrow them down if I had a million recordings by the ones that are part of a series and get more information on that series. If I had movies, etc., I could narrow it down that way. Just get all the information on that recording. And I can go back to TV. Remember, your HD channel start on 101. I just went to channel one. I'm on the SD channels. But it does tell me if I press OK, I can actually go back to the HD and watch the same program, just in case you get it wrong or mixed up. I can go straight to my guide by hitting my guide button without going to the home screen. Exit to go back to TV. Hitting the red button brings up interactive features. And that pretty much is your overview of your Manhattan recordable Freeview box. So overall, for the money and the fact that I've got a free terrestrial aerial, uh, it's making use of that. I can now have recording uh, functionality, uh, watch one, record two. But the fact that I've got it alongside my NVIDIA Shield, which will take up any other duties, especially my streaming duties, um, I, I'm running Plex on that, uh, along with a main server. 
I can use my Netflix, my Prime. So that's something to note. No Amazon Prime video, no Netflix on here. Two huge apps that you may feel are, you couldn't live without. But well, then again, you may have a, a decent smart TV. You may have them on your TV. Depends how techy you are. If you're slightly techy, you, you will have a separate uh, streaming box to do all that sort of thing with. But as a no brainer, yeah, uh, something that's just there. I wouldn't, wouldn't like to live with it all the time. It's pretty clunky. Um, I should point out in use, sporadically, it can be quite sluggish. The, the on-demand can be hit and miss. Add it to your watch list, doesn't always work. You may need a reboot. Sometimes you're changing channels. Suddenly it says uh, no signal. You go back, suddenly signal. It, there are, it, it's not perfect, but it's adequate. I think uh, if you're a complete non-techie um, and, and you're not looking for huge functionality, it's gonna work because there's not a lot to think about. And it works if you are a techie and you're using it alongside other things. It's not a replacement for Sky in the, when you're used to all the, the all singing, all dancing stuff you get from Sky. Other things to mention, it's a two hour buffer. You can re rewind. So that's another big thing, obviously Sky like. You're watching a t your program, your phone goes, you pause. Of course, you can now pause it. You watch, or you come in, you watch your program, or I would have liked that from the start. You can of course press your green button for a lot of these channels for the start, but you can rewind. So there's a continuous buffer. As long as you've left the unit on, it will, always rewind up to two hours and you can start playing again. I will note, you've got one light on the front. Um, it's red when it's in standby, it's blue when it's on. Don't think like Sky on a Skybox, that's gonna tell you if you're recording or not. You'd have to actually, go, when you start recording, it will say, you know, you can't, it's a bit of a no brainer, we are now recording. So you should know it's already recording, but if you've forgotten, you'd have to go into your actual recordings and see what's actually recording from there. Big miss on here, I think I mentioned, I'm not quite sure now. No backlight, along with the fact that it's really hard to use. There's no backlight functionality. I did mention it, I'm just remembering now. But for me, especially, you know, with something like uh, the NVIDIA Shield where it comes with a backlit remote, you can't go back. Once you've had a backlit remote, you can't go back because you, you, you're constantly looking. You've got used to that functionality. Should bear in mind, I did mention pass-through functionality, loop-out functionality to get that third channel. Only works when the box is on, though. So... <laughs> When you want to use that, remember the box needs to be on. If you're just going to, if you're just sticking the telly on and want, want to use that t the TV's tuner, this box will still need to be on. I think that pretty much covers everything I want to say. I think if, if you're looking at this box, you now know what it's going to do, what it's not going to do, the pluses and minuses, who it's really aimed at, um, and what it's like in use. So, not too bad. If it was off the money, I would say it was a fantastic bargain. It's still, they are still asking a little bit of money, but then it's maybe, uh, depending on what plan you had, maybe only a two or three months worth of Sky and you've already paid for the box. You know, you do get your series links and all that. There is a lot of functionality. You could use it as your only device with all that on demand. Just bear in mind, on demand can be sluggish. It does have Wi-Fi, but you really want to use an Ethernet, even with Ethernet, it does, it's not always that brilliant, but it does work eventually. I would say this is an okay buy. It really depends on your expectations and uh, how tech you are. So it's alongside some other functionality, it's brilliant. As your main functionality, you, it, it's, I would assume you're not hugely into your audio visual stuff. So I would say it's okay. As far as if you're going free view route, it's probably, it's still gonna be your best option. But I'm, so I'm really saying the pluses and minuses of having a free view play system. I'm not saying specific to this box. This is still your, if you want a recording functionality and go free view route, this is probably right now, the time of this video, your best bet. But I'm telling you my experiences and how it compares with a lot of the other stuff that I'm currently using on a day to day basis. I hope you got something out of my video and I thank you for watching. UK.